Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in again. Today we're going to have a good, uh, well I think it's going to be a really interesting video today. We're going to be working with some cephalotus. Uh, these are my cephalotus from my terrarium at work. Uh, they sit next to my desk and they, they grow very happily underneath uh, a simple T5 setup in a four foot fish tank. I've got a few other uh, carnivorous plants growing in there, some utricularia or the devil's weed that seems to come up everywhere. I should have really paid attention to what people were saying about that stuff. I ended up constantly farming it out from amongst my Drosera Hamiltonii. It's a, it's a real pain in the backside, so watch out if you are growing that stuff. Very pretty, incredibly prolific. So today we're going to be working, like I said before, with some cephalotus. First of all, we're going to need a gin and tonic because I love working with my plants and I love doing these videos. I also love gin and tonic. Oh, that's better. Gin and tonic. Cheers. Beautiful. Right, so, my cephalotus. This is my first cephalotus I bought. The, the pictures are probably about the size of the end of my thumb now. Um, there's a few leaves in here. Um, they're nice and hairy. And we're going to be doing something quite interesting with those leaves a bit later on during this video. This is my other cephalotus. This is a lot bigger. You can see it next to the size of my hand. Um, I bought this as a semi-mature plant. It probably had about five or six pictures. Since moving into the terrarium, this thing has gone mad and it grows. I, I hear a lot of growers really struggle with this plant, with uh, crown death or root death. Um, I find them really temperamental. I find these really, really easy to grow. Um, I just water it like a normal house plant. Uh, I just feed uh, water, uh, water from the bottom into a saucer. And when it's dried out, I leave it for a day, half a day, then top it up again. Um, if I catch any flies in the uh, um, in the office, then I will just drop them inside the pitcher. And this thing grows happily. There's lots of new little growth, the hairy little nubbins that grow out. I'll take some photos of those, put them at the end of this video. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're going to do some leaf pullings. So we're going to try and propagate from leaf cuttings taken off this. I've watched a few videos, some of the other YouTubers have done it. Um, it seems to have reasonably good success, something like 90% success rate. So I'm going to go and get some stuff ready. We're going to need some sphagnum moss. We're going to need something sterile, some tweezers to pull these leaves off of. Um, and I'll go and grab that, and then I'll come back and we'll finish this video off. Okay, YouTube. Well, this is what I'm using. These are um, ordinary sort of takeaway, like Chinese takeaway, um, little dishes, little trays. I save these up because they're, uh, well, they seem to be heat proof, microwave proof. So they're easy to sterilise, drop a bit of water in there, get them warm. Um, and they're, they're, they're going to be ideal for what we're going to do today. So what I've done, I don't know you can probably see that okay. I've just put some ordinary dead uh, long fibre sphagnum moss in the bottom there. Uh, ordinary stuff you can get from your garden centre. A lot of people say you know it's not appropriate or, or have had trouble with it. I've had nothing, no issues with it at all. It's got its own antiseptic and uh, antifungal properties. Um, and I use it a lot, I've never had any issues with it. Um, I've also got some uh, some live uh, uh, sphagnum moss here. I grow some of this, I've got a tray that sits down low uh, in the greenhouse uh, on the floor and I cultivate um, just normal sphagnum moss uh, in that and it grows along quite merrily. Uh, it, starts to get, it starts to get a little bit black if it gets a bit too much sunlight, the tips start to die off. Um, just a sp regular spray of rainwater in the tray and um, it seems to be absolutely fine. Um, so the things we're going to use are the little tray, dead sphagnum moss, live sphagnum moss, the lid, we're going to have to make a few holes uh, in this. Uh, I'm going to go away and do that now using this old tool uh, and some heat just to make a few holes in the top so there is the humidity is nice and high in here for the cuttings afterwards um, but it's not saturated so I'll go and do that now. I don't recommend doing this by the way um, th there's probably a safer way of doing this, uh, like wearing gloves, uh, not using a long, red hot, sharp stabbing instrument, um, the potential for uh, inhaling noxious fumes and so on and so on. You could probably drill this um, with a little speed bit or something like that which would do the same thing. So I'm going to do that now um, and then I'm going to come back and uh, we're going to take some leaf pullings off of this. This is my most vigorous one, the other one we're going to We'll, we'll probably take we'll, we'll take one off each. This one seems to go red a lot quicker in the sun. 
uh, and the teeth at the top of the trap seem to be a lot darker in colour. So I'll go away and do this now, make some holes, come back and then we'll do that. There we go, that's all done now. Um, just three little holes in the middle, just push them through uh, once, the, um, uh, once the spike was nice and, uh, nice and hot. Uh, just to let a little bit of air movement or uh, not to not so, so just so the cuttings aren't sitting in a hundred percent humidity where they're likely to uh, go moldy or rot um, so that's that bit done that can sit over here next we've got some tweezers uh, I sterilized these um, earlier just by passing them gently through the flames um, of the fire over there uh, or, or the, the gas hob it's, it's, I don't think it's really going to be an issue about cross-contamination in this instance and what I'm going to do is reposition the camera in a minute so we get this a bit closer up so we can really see what I'm doing. And what we're going to do is we're just going to try paring one of these leaves off from deep down inside the plant, being careful not to damage any of the traps. We might take some from the outside edges down here. There's a good size one there. I want to get one that's quite virulent. This is nice and green. I think it sits this way in the terrarium. So the light mainly hits this side of the plant. So there seems to be a lot more sun leaves or non-carnivorous leaves over this side. So we'll take some of these off. Um, when it comes to the smaller one, um, this one goes red really quickly or goes this, this sort of dark magenta color. Um, so we'll choose one of these. I don't know, we'll get around to finding a nice little one that's not gonna cause too much damage to the plant. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera and then turn it back on and we should be able to see a bit better. Okay, so I don't know how much better that is. We're certainly a lot closer. Uh, this is going to be a lot louder, this video, than my other ones. I'm usually a little bit further away from the external microphone on this thing. Um, so I've selected this leaf here. What we're going to do basically is shift some of the traps out of the way till I can get to the base of this leaf. Uh, using, using these tweezers, I'm just going to insert them in here. Hopefully get some of the bottom of the leaf with the tweezers. I'm just gently going to tug it off like that. So here we go. This is our first leaf pulling. So we've kept quite a bit of stalk there. There's a, or PTO. There's about, I don't know, half an inch of PTO against my finger. Um, and that, that's what, uh, the new plant nits will root from this section here. Um, we'll pop that up into the the uh, the dead uh, sphagnum moss and we'll put a little coating of live sphagnum moss over the end of this piece um, so that's one taken from this one what I'm going to do now is pop that over here next to the sphagnum moss and uh, we'll get the other plant out and repeat the process this shouldn't be detrimental to the plants we're only removing one leaf out of a large photosynthetic area so what I'm going to do again is select a leaf from in amongst the middle here. Probably not one of these ones that have got sort of the red coloration, but one of these leaves which has been more in shade, something like this one here. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Gently move the pots out of the way. Look for one that's got a longish stalk on it, like this one here. I'm just going to gently tug it out. Slightly smaller PTO this time. It's probably a quarter of an inch, but it should be ample for our requirements. I'll pop that over here. Don't forget which one's which. I'd like to uh, see if there's any variation at the speed they grow um, or the coloration of the traps from when they're a young from when the young plantlets are produced. So we'll keep this one this side over here so that I don't forget. Right, let's move Mr. Seth over there out of the way and we'll bring the tray in. So this is what we're going to be potting it up into. It's just the dead uh, uh, sphagnum moss and we're just going to place one leaflet on each side so that I can remember which one's which. So this was the this was our big boy this one here I'm just going to place him into the sphagnum moss like that and then on top of the PTO where, where it's come away from the parent plant I'm just going to place some live sphagnum moss in there 
this stuff will grow quite quick, well it doesn't grow quickly but it grows quick enough so that should provide plenty of moisture there and I'm going to place the other one the opposite side and what I'll do is I'll put a plant tag in the middle so I can remember which one's which and on top of that I'm just going to place some live sphagnum moss on top of there so the idea is these leaves can still photosynthesize um, and produce um, uh, produce nutrients no assimilants from photosynthesis and um, hopefully the uh, natural rooting ability of the PTO or stem of the leaf will take over and we'll end up with little plantlets usually takes well from what I've read takes four to six weeks so we'll have to do an update on it so I hope you can see that okay there that was the one that uh, the smaller of the, the two plants and this was the, 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 the big one we can see in the distance over here so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and give that a spray with some um, with just some ordinary rainwater. I'm not going to use RO water or deionized water. I just don't think it's it, 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 it's it's required. The sphagnum moss itself has got antifungal properties anyway, so that should be fine. Give it a good spray. Sphagnum moss can hold like. I don't know, like twice its weight in water, so that should be ample in there, I would imagine, for our requirements. And then what I'm going to do is just pop the lid on top, so it's nice and humid inside. Like that, ready to go. Good luck. I suppose we will find out within four to six weeks. That's going to go now onto a north facing or west facing window. Something that doesn't get direct sunlight because this little container would heat up super quick and it'd probably kill the leaves inside. And I won't put it in the greenhouse because that'll be too warm as well. So I've got a window sill in the kitchen here uh, which doesn't really get much direct sunlight on one of the corners. So I'll pop it over there and uh, check back on it in about three days. If the leaves start to go brown or shrivel up, then it hasn't worked, basically. If they stay green after two to three weeks, then you've got a pretty good chance that everything's going to be okay. So, fingers crossed. Okay, so thanks again for tuning in. Um, if you like this little tutorial, or how I'm doing it, or, or not doing it, I guess we'll find out how successful I've been uh, in four or six weeks. Um, although, what I've seen, this is, this is probably going to work. They seem to root quite quite readily and produce plantlets quite freely from, from leaf pullings. Root cuttings are also a very successful way of propagating them. So we'll find out together, but I feel quietly confident. Um, if you like this, don't forget to subscribe. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all again, or you to see me again. See you later on. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.